Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the basics of client-side virtualization. Today we're going to be talking about the purpose of virtual machines, the hypervisor, and then conclude with some requirements for virtualization. And with that, let's begin this session. So we begin by talking about the purpose of virtual machines. The main purpose of a virtual machine is to run, guess what, a virtual PC from within a physical PC. The host system sets up and manages the VM. The VM can run almost any operating system and it can be either sandboxed, which means completely isolated, or it can share in available network resources. Virtual machines are very versatile and are becoming more and more common every day. So why would you need a virtual machine? Well, they're a great way to learn things. You can learn a new operating system inside of a VM without making any changes to your base operating system. This way you can test it out and see if you want to install it on your machine or on a whole host of other machines. Virtual machines can test out application or patches for problems before they are deployed on production machines. In some cases, you may have an application that won't work in a modern operating system. Well, a virtual machine can allow you to load that legacy operating system and the application that requires it in order to run. It's a great way to keep old applications running in the modern era. Now let's discuss the hypervisor. So you may be asking yourself, what is a hypervisor? Well, it's the virtual machine manager. It's the software that runs on top of the host hardware that allows for virtualization. It's what allocates resources to the virtual machine, and it controls the virtual machine's access to other resources, like the network. There are a lot of hypervisors that are out there and available. Some free ones would include Windows Virtual PC. This, by the way, gives you access to Windows XP mode for your legacy applications. The only thing about Virtual PC is it can only run a 32-bit guest operating system. Another one would be VMware Player by VMware. Now this hypervisor can run both 32 and 64-bit guest operating system. Another free hypervisor is VirtualBox by Oracle. It can also run 32-bit and 64-bit guest operating system. Now let's move on to some of the requirements for virtualization. Now besides the need for a hypervisor, you need to be aware that VMs share the physical resources of the host machine. Because of that, the processor and RAM are the keys to a good VM experience. So now let's talk about some of those requirements. For the processor, well, VMs can be processor intensive. So you should try and have a fast multi-core processor, and it does need to be capable of hardware-assisted virtualization. Now, because the VM shares the RAM with the host system, you need to make sure that there is enough RAM present to fulfill the needs for not only the host, but for each VM that's active. A large disk drive can also be a key requirement for a VM experience. As the files grow, you need to make sure that you have space to contain everything, including the VM's operating system. There are also some security requirements for a VM. If you're using a VM to test antivirus, then you need to make sure that it's sandboxed and isolated from the rest of your systems. VMs can share in the network. And because of that, you need to make sure that your NIC, your network interface card, has a high enough throughput to ensure a good network experience for the host and the VM. Or you might consider putting in multiple network interface cards and using one or more of them for your VMs. Now that concludes this session on the basics of client-side virtualization. We talked about the purpose of virtual machines, the hypervisor, 
and then some of the requirements for virtualization. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure we'll do some more soon.